relatively little is known about box jellyfish. Most of their life is shrouded in mystery, yet they kill more people than any other creature in Australian waters, some 70 people in the past 100 years, more than great white sharks. Are they just drifting in the surf? Or are they somehow capable of actively hunting their prey? If Jamie can find the answer, he might be able to help save human lives. His plan? Attach a radio transmitter to a jellyfish and track it. Swimming with one of the world's most venomous animals requires nerve and protection. Any exposed skin is vulnerable, and he's going in barehanded. Beautiful animal. Yeah, it sort of sounds a little dangerous, but as long as you get hold of the right end of the animal, it's just like working with snakes. Get the wrong end, you're in trouble. Careful not to brush up against its deadly tentacles, Jamie uses a specially designed surgical glue to attach a small transmitter to the underside of the jellyfish. What I'm really interested in is trying to work out where and what they do for a living. So what I'm trying to do is able to predict when they turn up and when they disappear. And if we can do that, that makes the beaches a heck of a lot safer. Almost immediately, the tracking signal begins to move. The tag is working, and already it begins to reveal the secrets of the box jellyfish. It isn't just drifting aimlessly. It's swimming, and fast, at speeds faster than most Olympic swimmers. And seemingly, it's swimming with intent. The tag jellyfish is headed straight towards shore, past a beach full of people. and heads into the mangrove trees in the shallows at the far end of the beach. But why come here? This forest of roots is treacherous for a creature dragging eight feet of tentacles. It could easily get entangled here. But these mangroves are the spawning ground for countless fish, the box jelly's prey. And somehow, the jellies are successfully navigating this labyrinth and hunting. But how is this possible? How can an animal with no brain not only negotiate this perilous world, but also actively hunt down prey? In his lab, Jamie is setting up an experiment to see exactly how box jellies navigate. He begins by placing white PVC pipes in the middle of the jelly's tank. Blindly, the jellies crash into them. These guys have actually run into this white pole and knocked it over. I mean, it's, they obviously can't see the white. But Jamie changes the color. This time, black poles, dark like the roots in the mangrove forest. If you remove those white poles out and put black poles in, the animals go from what appears to be this random movement to almost this movement of going, okay, we're just going to avoid these black shapes. And so they'll swim in and out of the tubes. It's no longer random, they actually seem to be physically avoiding them. You look at that, I mean, that animal made a distinctive movement away from black pole. It seems that these jellies might actually be able to see and dodge obstacles in their path. But the experiment is not yet over. Jamie has one more trick up his sleeve. Red poles. The results are remarkable. What was really interesting is when we put these red tubes in, if the animals no longer did these figure rates through the tanks, they seemed to spend all their time as far away from these poles as possible. There is little doubt that these animals can pick up things in the water. I mean, they're seeing the poles and they're actively making decisions as to whether or not they're going to go around it or whether they're going to avoid it. They seem to be able to pick out the differences between certain sorts of colours. Exactly why these animals react to colour so dramatically, science has so far been unable to answer. 
but it does seem clear that box jellies have visual abilities.